Hi everybody, this is Alan Finan and Regina Charbonneau, who is the culinary ambassador for American Queen Voyages. Now, she has had a long career as a restaurateur and an educator, and we're going to find out how she pivoted from the American rivers to serving in Alaska here on Insider Travel Report. Regina, thank you for talking to us. Glad to be here with you. What's your nickname that you're famous for? The Queen of Biscuits. The Queen of Biscuits. And, and, you, and you teach that. That's like I do. In Natchez, Mississippi, I have a little cooking school, and I teach the world how to make my butter biscuits. So. OK, well, uh, my question now to you is, you have you serve the rivers, the Mississippi, the Snake, the Columbia. Tell us what it's like to do that, and then what it's like to pivot to serve now on um, Ocean Victory. Yes. Well, you know, it's interesting because I think most people would say, all right, now what does a southern chef have to do with these Alaskan waters? And I mean, this is such an amazing experience. But um, I grew up in Natchez, Mississippi, on the Mississippi River, which was natural to me when the American Queen uh, asked me to help them 10 years ago when they had one boat, and they now have eight. And it was great when they asked me to come on uh, this year as their culinary ambassador. Well, I have a deep Southern background. I grew up in Natchez, Mississippi. I went to many Southern universities. I had a better time at each university. And I ended up uh, going to Alaska with a group of friends to save money with the hopes of finishing college. But I called my mother from a landline. This was quite a many years ago. And I said, I've got the best news. I'm not going to graduate from college. I've just taken a job cooking at a construction camp for <laughs> eight men. Every Southern Catholic mother's dream to hear. I mean, she was quite upset, but she got over it. And I did that, and I worked in a place in Alaska. I worked in Alaska in Igiagig, Kakanak, Chignik Lake, and I did... It was an amazing experience, and I did this, and I saved money to go to cooking school in Paris. So this is not like the other side of the world to you. No. This is an extension of your knowledge. It's, it's an extension of my knowledge and very much a part of my culinary history. And uh, the bonus was my husband's then girlfriend introduced us, and we've been married 40 years. We got married in Alaska. So, uh, and Alaska was my... Kind of my start, I was a chef at the Tower Club, which is a petroleum club. I was the first woman chef, Club Corporation of America ever hired. And I, uh, it was a great experience. And then I, from that, my husband ended up, we moved to San Francisco, and that's where I started opening restaurants. So the, you know, Alaska, the Pacific Northwest is not totally foreign to me, and I definitely have a connection, even though my I have a very southern heart and soul. I am much more at home on the Mississippi River than in cold waters, but this is the most amazing experience. This boat is just gorgeous. So tell us how you, um, what are the types of dishes you're serving on the other ships, and then tell us what you're planning for this. Yes. Well, um, what I do, and the reality is I'm a southern chef, so it, that always kind of creeps into whatever I cook. I studied in France. I love classic French dishes like beef bourguignon, which was served yesterday, mm -hmm. coco vin, those kind of dishes are to me. And uh, we have a, an amazing Italian chef on board, so anything Italian, French works in any culture, on any waters. But what we're trying to do, my whole focus has always been seasonal cooking and finding local ingredients my entire life. So when I was on the Empress, I did, um, I did a beautiful salmon and a black pepper marinade with a smoked tomato uh, pasta. The right? Yes. And so, you know, the black pepper marinade was actually a recipe that my dad used to, it was his recipe, and he would use it to poach Gulf oysters in. Uh, so you transferred and it. And I transferred it to, well, when I cooked in Alaska, I used that pepper marinade to, to cook salmon, salmon because right. salmon was so foreign to me. Um, I kind of put my southern twist on it and 
I don't know if you remember Louis Rukeyser. He used to do uh, a show on PBS for years mm -hmm. about investing, I think, and he was an economist. And he loved that so much, I would have to bottle it and ship it to him <laughs> on the East Coast. But the um, that dish that I did then will stay on board. And as I come on these trips and use some local ingredients, then those recipes are left behind. And it's really nice too. We give a recipe card to the guest to take home with whatever I cook when I'm on board, which is a lot of fun. When I wrote my book, Mississippi Current, the Mississippi River to me was divided into three sections because on the upper Mississippi, even though they had catfish, they didn't eat it. They ate walleye and pike. <laughs> and then when you get, the minute you hit the confluence of the Arkansas River and the Mississippi, catfish came in the picture and <laughs> white rice, from wild rice to white rice, uh, pecans, no walnuts. So, I mean, major shifts in ingredients as well. And then up here, of course, the proteins are different. Up here being Alaska. Up here, Alaska. That's where we and, are now. Yes, in Alaska, I mean, totally different. And I mean, I'm going to be doing a king crab chowder. Oh. Yes. So I'm, are you going to miss that? I'm going to miss that. Yeah. And but then my chowder has developed probably just from my travels in the south it would be um, a cream soup wouldn't have that many ingredients in it it would have the crab and maybe a little bit of onion and a lot of cream you know a rich butter flour cream base mm -hmm. but um i do potatoes okay, and yes. smoked bacon and it's smoked a really bacon. hearty is that a southern influence there it's a southern influence <laughs> and to me that smoke I, and, and smoky. maybe yeah. smoky smoke is kind of in my palette of things that i like to mm -hmm. do that bring it home for me mm -hmm. but um that's going to be a great dish and you know if we're on the mississippi river i can do that with um gulf shrimp mm -hmm or blue crab, so, mm -hmm. you know, there are some things that are, are the same. And, um, but what I'm so impressed with, with this boat, which is, it's different, so different than the Mississippi, and both are just amazing experiences. I This is so much about the expedition and the outdoor and the research and, I mean, learning about humpback whales to the degree that we're going to all the knowledge we'll have when we get off this boat. It's mm -hmm. just amazing. One, it's luxurious. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just loving right. it. And it's like going the ship on a, itself. Yeah. I mean, the ship itself is just so luxurious. Like and then on... it's like going on a first class vacation mm -hmm. or camping trip, basically. Right, right. And you definitely need some warm gear to get out on the zodiacs and tour. And I think now, after being on the boat, I'm thinking I will definitely be coming up with a lot of soups <laughs> and warm, hearty dishes. Yes, yes. So, we needed it after we came off the zodiac. Yes, but yes. but you're, we're not going to be eating humpback whale or bald eagle. No, we will not. Just okay. seeing them. So that's good. No, I just want you all no, to hear that. I, yeah. No, she's it, assuring us. I'm assuring you that uh, they are protected <laughs> and we cannot eat those okay. items. But when I cooked out in the bush of Alaska, I had seagull eggs we ate seagull eggs mm. and we had in chignik lake beautiful uh salmon in mm. all of those places mm. so it um yeah i okay. cooked a lot of salmon in my career so let's um if we go out to a hundred thousand travel advisors um what how do you think travel advisors should sell american queen voyages but from your culinary perspective when, when, you know, they talk about all the other things, but when it comes down to, okay, and what are we going to eat? Yes. Well, I think what's important and why I love this company and when they asked me to come back and be involved, it was such an honor, is everything is so well thought out. And this is, to, to add this expedition element, if I would have been able to bring my sons at 15 and 17 on this trip, Oh, I think, I mean, it would be life-changing yeah, for them, yeah. you know, about our environment and protecting the whales and the, you know, the difference of what, you know, these big ships mean to the environment and mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. This is not, this is like the perfect size. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I think what I'm bringing to the table, which they want and what I, why I love this company is that it's all about the sense of place. Everything from every little element that they think of is really makes you embrace and remember where you are. So you certainly don't want, uh, even though I make a fabulous gumbo, you don't want gumbo when you're on this trip and you want to eat things that are that you don't find in new orleans when you go to new orleans you want that flavor so i think um, one of my things that i'm really working so hard on is to deliver that experience whether it be in, through the cooking demo or recipes that i leave behind but i want people to have that sense of place when we were on the empress on the columbia river I made a classic Sazerac cocktail, which I grew up with, but all of the ingredients were found locally on that trip. And I did a little blog, uh, and it was distilleries, breweries, burgers, and bakeries, oh my. And all I did, uh -huh. every little place uh -huh. I got off and uh -huh. found ingredients and incorporated them into my cooking demo and into the cocktail demo which is fun. Now we are in Alaska and I don't know whether we're going to do something with Yukon Jack, but, um, or what my <laughs> cooking, but right. it will, it's about to be Derby day. So we're probably going to do, it's funny. I created a couple of appetizers to use smoked salmon and smoked sturgeon, local fish in a different way. People don't think about smoked salmon with deviled eggs or so we're serving that today i'm doing a little cooking demo oh, okay. and i do a actually in the smoked salmon the i'm sorry the deviled eggs i love with smoked sturgeon and salmon roe it's beautiful and delicious and then uh, i do a pimento cheese with a uh, cold smoked salmon chopped up in it and pepidou and we'll do that as a little appetizer but um so I think it's okay to take local ingredients and put a little southern twist on them. Yeah. But again, the ingredients need to be celebrated first and foremost. It was funny, as you're speaking, you said, this is what I bring to the table, and you do bring to the table. And I was <laughs> I'm proud to share a dinner table with you. Oh, so thank that was you for fun. That. You're so welcome. Uh, but uh, good luck in the endeavor. Thank you. And uh, I want to I want to hear more creative dishes coming out of yeah, it. Yeah, and I think we will. You know, I hope. You know, I'm ready to do this next year. I don't know if I'll still be the culinary ambassador, but it's. Um, I think this just has so much potential for the ultimate experience uh, from top to bottom. So. You know, yes, I'm involved, but I'm telling you, if um, as a travel advisor, you can't go wrong recommending this product. It's just a really fantastic product that I'm so proud to be involved with. Well, make sure you watch our uh, interviews with John Wagner. We're going to talk about the entire ship, but uh, a ship doesn't sail unless it's fed. And so thank you for speaking You're with so us. You're so welcome. <laughs> uh, and this is Alan Fine for Insider Travel Report. <laughs>